the great feast of the holy and undivided Trinity. It's the last party Sunday uh, before Advent, and Advent isn't really a party, is it? So it, this is the last day to really let your hair down uh, before Christmas. So it's a bit of a thought, that, isn't it? So uh, let's hope that we are uh, in good spirit and ready to unpack all the mysteries of the Trinity this morning. Thank you to everyone who has uh, helped uh, over the past couple of days with the church cleaning. It's always good to have the church spick and span, and we're grateful for everybody who to uh, contribute to that. I, am, uh, I have launched an appeal for a thousand pounds. Don't get the idea which is always asking for money. The last appeal I launched for the church was uh, over 12 months ago, and that was to get the uh, equipment for live stream. Uh, we have had the Salvation Army since then and Malawi, but we didn't keep any of that. So this is an appeal, a thousand pounds. So I'm going to shake you all as you leave, hold you upside down and shake you until we get a thousand pounds. And you online don't think you're exempt either because it will take anybody's money. Here to put uh, sound and visual equipment into the refectory, those who have children and young people. See, they never bother me because I have this firm assurance that I'm louder than any of them. And any child who has tried that battle has lost. But there is this thing in church that, you know, it's a bit like the old days uh, when a young lad was playing with a train on the back of the pew and the chap in front turned round grumpily and said, shh, shh. And the boy said, oh, you like playing with trains too. And that has to be our attitude with children. You know, I, I like Sunday school. I don't think it's a good thing at all because what it does is it teaches children that you go away let the adults do what they do, and let's inoculate you against faith. Children need to learn to worship with their parents, but sometimes they're noisy beggars. So we have the facility. You would not want to come to church and not see and not hear, and we owe it to our young people and to our young families to have that facility. Cough up. If we do it quickly, I won't have to go on about it. Okay? A thousand pounds, nothing. Well, we're here to worship God. Now that's out of the way. We are going to celebrate all this Sunday on the Trinity, and we will soon be stand for our entrance hymn, which you can mumble into your masks. Holy, holy, holy.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have too often exchanged the worship of the living God for idols of our own imagining. As we gather to offer our praises to the holy and undivided Trinity and to worship him in spirit and in truth, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and, you and against, against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. person of unclean lips. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your guilt is taken away and your sin forgiven. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And so we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of the The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty and operative. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon spit like tar, and the cedars like young velvet. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and splits the forest bare. In his temple all cries glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people a blessing. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the death, the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, 
it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? No one can enter, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, 
but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed us for God. From every tribe and language and nation, you have made us to be a kingdom and priests serving our God. To the one who sits on, t on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our King and our Redeemer. Amen. This annual celebration of the holy and undivided Trinity reminds us that our God is a community within himself. The three expressions of that one life are experienced as we know him and them as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is so exciting is that because of this doctrine of the Trinity, and yes, I know it's a man-made doctrine from the third century and all that twaddle, yet it's still in Scripture that God has three persons, we have assurance. Now, you're listening to this. Just listen very carefully. We have assurance that we are included within this community of God. We are part of their shared life now, and that it is our inheritance that we will go on to share in that life within and beyond time. You're part of God. God includes you. Me as well. <laughs> what a sense of humor. And all of God, working together, achieves for us our faith. So here we have just a, a, a basic summary of what it is as Christians distinctively uh, we believe. Isaiah, did you hear that glorious reading from Isaiah when Isaiah is commissioned to be God's mouthpiece? And he shows us that it's possible against all expectations to be in the presence of the living God and survive. Everybody thought that if you saw God, bang, you would die on the spot. And that's what Isaiah thought. And he says, I've seen God, hey, and I'm alive. Wonderful. 
So he shows us that it is possible to be in the presence of the living God and survive. And in this vision of God, enthroned in heaven with all the angels and seraphs singing that eternal sanctus, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now, I know I'm not offending James when I say this, because he agrees with me. But as a priest, there is nothing worth worse in the middle of a service than getting through that beginning part of the Eucharistic prayer. And we say, with angels and archangels and with all the powers of heaven, and the organist sort of passes wind, and you go, holy. Ah, we need Mozart. We need glorious Haydn at that moment. They come in with cymbals and timpani, holy, holy, holy. Shake the rafters, because the angels in heaven will do that. And Isaiah, in the presence of that holiness, becomes aware of his unworthiness. Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And yet my eyes have seen the king. But he hears. I'm not... I'm not going to take any incense charcoal and come round and touch your lips today. You may be assured, I'm trusting God to seal the forgiveness, not me having to do it. But he hears the words, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. In the presence of the living God, our faith is that we don't live with shadows from our past lurking over us. Our guilt is forgotten. And most Christians are not as good as God at forgetting the things they've done wrong. They allow these things to creep into their minds. But let me tell you from Scripture, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Now, I almost want to come down and take you and hold your shoulders back and say, sit up straight. You don't have to carry the burden of who you have been. You just have to live in the potential of who you will be because your guilt has departed. God sets us free from ourselves, from our past and for our future. And that's why Isaiah, like the little swat in the classroom that he was, when God says, who will go? And he says, I will go, I will go. I don't know where I've got to go. It's a bit like that moment when uh, God says to Noah, Noah, build me an ark. And Noah says, yes, Lord, just one thing. What's an ark? And here is Isaiah, who will go? I'll do it. Because if we're set free from our past and free to be ourselves, we are liberated to be anything that God calls us to be. So, through God's deliberate cleansing, we are made to belong in God. Then we come to Romans. Romans tells us about our status as adopted members of God's family, grafted into the community that is God. Now, there's been a great deal about slavery in the news, and despite the fact that the New Testament treats slavery as a normal part of life, it is Christians who were rightly at the forefront of having this cruel and inhumane practice ended. In my Baptist days, as you went into the Baptist headquarters uh, in Holborn, in London, there was at the bottom of the stairs a glass case, and in the glass case were the manacles and the chains of a slave with the whip of a slave master beside them, uh, a tribute to William Nibb, who as a Christian fought against slavery. I know if that practice was indeed ended, and yet there is still a need for Christian voices to be heard against the slavery that happens in our world, 
in our community. People we have seen, people we live next door to, enslaved by people who don't have their best interests at heart. Christians need to speak out. But what Paul is getting at here is the transition from being a slave with no rights at all, of being no account, to being an adopted child with the full rights as an heir and to belonging. That's what Paul celebrates. Adoption is permanent and adds a security to belonging. I did look up. Is it possible in law to become unadopted? And it is just, but it requires a very, very long process, and it is very irregular. But in God's kingdom, once adopted, we are, as the text said, co-heirs with Christ. So, through God's deliberate choice, we are made to belong in God. The great thing with being adopted is you're chosen. If you're born naturally, you just end up with what you're given. But in adoption, you look at it and think, yeah, I'll have that one. Yeah, pick and mix from Woolies. Yeah, they'll have that one. And you deliberately choose. God deliberately chooses us. And then in John's Gospel, John repeats Jesus' teaching that in the power of the Spirit, we begin again. If you're squeamish, just ignore this next bit. There is a reason why our conscious mind doesn't remember the experience of birth, isn't there? It's just a bit traumatic for the baby. <laughs> and I'm told for the mother as well. Uh, but I've, I've never been a mother, so I can't do, say anything about that. But call the midwife, as it'll be on later today, delights in that moment of straining and pushing, and then splat! The baby arrives, and then gets smacked on the backside, so that it starts, dear me, you've forgotten it, haven't you? I've forgotten it. It's too bad to remember. And here is Jesus saying to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is thinking, please, no. Can you want me to get back inside my mother's womb and pop out again? No, thank you. Well, you can imagine it, can't you? Oh, I'm not trying it. And Jesus has to explain to Nicodemus, this clever man, you twonk, it's about being born again of God's Spirit. Yet that is the Spirit's task in us, something we reenact in baptism, that we are born again. God the Father sent God the Son so that God the Spirit can bring us to that new birth. That is what that text that most of us who endured Sunday school, uh, Sunday afternoons, it took me a long time to realize why all the teachers in Sunday school were called Miss. That's because the Misses were doing something else. Now they got rid of the kids. But there we go, that first verse that we ever learned. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. So, the first point today, just to recap, was through God's deliberate cleansing, we are made to belong in God. The second point was through God's deliberate choice, we are made to belong in God. And then, through God's deliberate invitation to be born again, we are made to belong in God. I've never understood these people who think that the Trinity is difficult. I, I know about canotic theory and all sorts of strange things, but God is one, God is three. It's not difficult to get your head round. I'm a husband, a father, a rector, but I'm one. 
You're the same. You're just, just multiple schizophrenics amongst us. Yet, we are one. And so, that doctrine of God belonging together isn't difficult. It's about the community in God. We don't ever have to explain it. What we have to do is experience it. God the Father loves you. God the Son died for you. God the Holy Spirit infills you. And because God, that community of God, is committed to us, we get to see it from the inside. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty, God, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls and was found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy, and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord. We pray for the church created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy, and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. External spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick, and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them your mercy and grace. Today, we pray for Julie Weston. May she rest in peace. And from the Book of Remembrance, we pray for Beatrice Alley and Kathleen Richards. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice holy, Father, Son, Son. Mysterious Godhead, three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you. 
bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And peace to you from God our Heavenly Father, peace from His Son Jesus Christ to our peace, peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver, the peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us the branches of the true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only beloved Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. 
we, your holy church, acclaim you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, Lord our, our hearts hunger, hunger for you. you. Give, Give us, us this bread always. always.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. This is the body of Christ. Amen.
Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, when you leave here today, remember that you are part of that community in God. You're on the inside looking out because you belong. And if that doesn't cheer you up, then nothing ever will, because that is community in God.
And we're all in it together, <laughs> whether you like it or not. But you're in the inside, looking out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.